the spurred. My father was playing chess with his penis. He'd set up a low table and two stools by the glass wall that faced the garden. His penis sat on one stool, its back to the window. My father, who was the more patient of the two, was playing with care and skill. But the penis, a hothead, played all sorts of wild and risky moves. For the moment, they were paying off. A log fire crackled in the grate. But wait, before I tell you about that, I must provide a little background. Before the glass house, before the city, before hysterical males came to dominate our family, we lived in a farmhouse, set in an orchard. Those were days of fruit and blossom, the days when my mother was still with us. This is the story of how she came to leave. Sebastian Skeleton, my father, was not in those days the priapic monster he has since become. He was a relatively sensitive man, a horticulturalist, a maker of thin-lipped pottery with his own hand-built kiln, an avid reader of insipidly nationalistic poetry written in the Ugrian Uralic family of languages. Unfortunately, he was also having an affair. And even more unfortunately, it was with a barnyard farm. Where did the sordid tryst between the goose and my father begin? How did this witless bird inspire his love? And what were the feathery guiles she employed to make him lose interest so completely in my mother? It's difficult to answer these questions. What seems certain is that the location of the goose shed next to the fragile structure housing my father's pottery kiln provided him with the perfect alibi. It was I, Peter, who found the secret interconnecting door, bent low to pass through it, and saw the two suspicious concaves in the straw, recent warm impressions of the bodies of man and goose. <laughs> Scraping around next to them, I also found a foul pile of goose eggs. I took them to the big pan and tossed them in, wincing as I watched Quiddy, Pippi, snout them open and guzzle their spilled contents. Failed amalgams, no doubt, of human and goose. I'm reminded of a similar case of a rural man wrapped by sexual desires he couldn't or wouldn't control. I discovered in my father's bookcase the diary of the typographer, sculptor, and artist, Eric Gill. One day in 1929, he noted in his diary, Bath continued to experiment with dog after and discovered that a man would join. Bath. Bath. Continued experiment with a dog after and discovered that a dog would join with a man. Fuck. We can imagine my father's journal striking a similar term. Bath, after, discovered that a goose will join with a man. What was about my mother? She certainly didn't deserve my father's neglect. She was a woman as well endowed with intelligence as with beauty. She must have had an inkling of what was going on. Perhaps she noticed how my father had stopped eating pâté, once his favourite food. Whatever triggered her suspicion, soon after my father's affair with the goose began, my mother returned from her regular charity work in the local village with a, with a fine spruce candle. Of course, immediately saw the bird as a dangerous rival. Take it back, he demanded. We don't need any more geese on this farm. My mother explained that the gander would keep Rebecca, the goose, company and help her produce handsome goslings that we could sell at market. My father protested, but finally, in order not to look suspicious, had to accept the farmer, who was christened Emperor and given free range of the barnyard. A mere two weeks later, Emperor was found with his neck wrong. My father blamed foxes, but what fox beneath the neck of a goose and fails to take a single bite of its flesh? Later, I discovered in his secret diary an account of the murder. Emperor had plunged my father into the depths of depression, a depression fueled by jealousy. I, I wish to die to die to die. Had written, Bring me an undertaker who will sell me a plot, for I have surprised my mistress in the arms, or should I say the wings, of her husband, the Gander Emperor. I thought I was happy and had love at the end of my harpoon, such was my father's odd, florid, antique style of writing. But yesterday evening at the corner of the wood, I came upon my mistress copulating with her husband. What?
marked treachery. <laughs> this so-called emperor of the barnyard, this humping, pruning, feathered camel, cock of the walk, how can I find the words to describe my disgust for him? Continued my father, rage carrying his metaphors to hell in a handcart. <laughs> in beguiling his own wife to cheat on her lover with him, he has taken adultery to its logical conclusion. I had noticed that the embraces of her beak were less fierce upon my lips than before. It is all due to him, her husband. Now she will make offspring who no longer resemble me. My father seems to have become feverish at this point. The goose had made no human shaped offspring, offspring, offspring. I have surprised the geese, my father continued, at the corner of the wood. And just to rub it in, the imperial gander is now squawking his taunts around the barnyard. The one who was wearing the cuckold's horns, he says, isn't the one you think. How he hisses his derision. How he mocks me. He will die for this humiliation. I shall be a tonight. The next entry is curd. Ran Emperor's neck. I shall tell them a fox did it. Afterwards, crept away to Rebecca's shed. She rejected me. I forced her. The bitch is only a goose. She should not forget it. Nor for that matter, remember it. And there is the pithily summed up my father's insufferable character, the double binds and the force on all those he came into contact with. We could neither be what we were, innocent children deserving of protection, nor his lovers, his mates, his equals, as we also wanted to be. As for his wife, our mother, her callous as for his wife, our mother, his callous attitude to her is clear. Holding the goose Rebecca under his arm, my father strode into the farmhouse kitchen. This is the pig I've been fucking, he declared. <laughs> my mother looked up, surprised. That's not a pig. That's Rebecca the goose, she exclaimed. I must have to talk to you, snapped my father. <laughs> my mother fled. She packed her bags one day and left us, never to return. My father smashed all his pottery and burned down the barn with Rebecca still in it. We moved to the city, to the glass house, where, in full view of the lamplighters, my father now sits playing chess.